Well, well, hey there, big guy. What are you? Oh God, what's happened to your chin? Oh geez, I I thought you were farming somewhere. No, what, what do you got going on here? Cosmic shards for? Oh, oh, you're practically just giving them away now, are you? Ugh. I mean, this is this is so much easier. Huh. Forget ten years of movies. Oh, we got it. We got it now. Perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. And don't you think the movies would have just been that much better if they could wear the Infinity Stones on their head? I mean, I mean, look at this, right? Right? All right, maybe not. I mean, maybe not, but I guess that's why I don't write them. Uh, today, uh, we are going to work on a Minecraft tutorial all about trading. Trading with villagers, specifically. Um, not that there are many other people you can trade with in Minecraft. I guess the piglins do count now. Um, but today we are going to talk all about custom trades, how to set them up, uh, how to make custom items tradable from villagers, uh, how to make the ideal villager so they don't run away and despawn, um, all this kind of stuff. Now the reason we're doing this is because I want to make a slew of videos on how to make custom maps, basically RPG and adventure stuff in Minecraft using mostly to only vanilla mechanics, command blocks, that kind of stuff. Uh, so the first step on our journey is going to be learning how to make basically shopkeeps uh, or villagers for your world or map that can sell any item you want them to sell. Uh, they can change the prices. Uh, you can do all sorts of cool stuff and to make sure that these pesky villagers can't be killed by your players. So when we're talking about uh, villagers in general, uh, you all know them from Minecraft. They've been around for actually quite a few updates at this point, but they recently got a pretty big revamp. So if you haven't played Minecraft in a while, uh, then you should know most villagers uh, that spawn out in the wild will spawn with a job. Apparently, you know, not these guys, that's fine. Um, these guys are just the nitwits that sort of, sort of run around. But uh, villagers now spawn with a job as denoted by their sort of apron um, and their little tool in their belt. This guy, I think, is technically a cleric, but I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and their job determines what they can actually sell, different types of items, and now you can level them up. So previously, you could just sort of, you know, go through and uh, trade lots of different things and it would sort of unlock different stuff. Now, they sort of all have jobs that they can do. Uh, you can, they can remember their trades. Uh, you can get discounts on their prices. There's a lot you can do with villagers in Minecraft. And that's even before you, you start to um, modify them with commands and stuff like this. Uh, but these guys are actually going to get uh, a little annoying. So if you just... Uh... You just bear with me here. I, I got to uh, got to get rid of these guys real quick. Don't worry, don't don't worry. It'll be quick. I promise. Right. So now that all of those villagers have uh, relocated to a nearby village, right, uh, just you know, over the flat plain over there, uh, we can start talking about what we actually need to do to make an ideal villager for modifying. So like you just saw, the default villager sort of runs around, and that is how they appear even when you summon them in from the summon command. Now, if you're not familiar with the summon command in Minecraft, uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on that soon, as well as a lot of other basic commands in Minecraft so people can sort of get a basic understanding. But just as a quick overview, uh, the summon command allows you to summon any entity in Minecraft, whether that's a mob, uh, an experience orb, uh, an item frame, anything that counts as an entity you can summon with the summon command. What that means is we can also modify what we summon with different tags in Minecraft, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, using the different tags to summon villagers to our liking and to our needs, uh, so they can sell what we want them to sell, such as these uh, lovely shiny space rocks over here. So we'll start with uh, the very first tag that we're going to want to add, and actually how you add tags. Again, if you're unfamiliar with adding tags in Minecraft to different commands and stuff, I recommend checking out uh, another couple videos on that. I will be making a few on the summon command and other commands in general. Basically, we want to start with a few parameters. So if we put in our uh, local coordinates like this, it means the villager will spawn exactly where the command is being executed, ergo this command block right here. So if we actually sort of uh, put it up by one, this will say spawn it at these coordinates, but one block above so it doesn't spawn in the command block. That should be fine for our purposes. 
And then you can put these two brackets right here, which will indicate any parameters and tags that we want to give to our villager that's highlighted in blue here. So tags, what are they? Well, there are loads of them and you can look it up. Uh, each mob has its individual set of tags. There are a lot of them that are shared between mobs. Uh, but we will be specifically talking about the villager ones today, um, and some of those do work on other mobs, but not all of them. The first one that we're going to want to start with to make sure that we're creating the ideal villager to set up custom trades is the invulnerable tag. So if we come in here and we start by writing invulnerable, and we set that equal to 1. Now what this means is this is giving the invulnerable tag to our villager that we're summoning. And if you couldn't guess, invulnerable means that they cannot be killed. This mob cannot die from player causes. Now someone in creative mode and opt uh, can of course kill them, um, but your general players that are going to be running around primarily in survival or adventure mode won't be able to affect this mob, which is usually really good. It's especially good for things like item frames that you want to set up that you don't want the players to break. Simply set it to invulnerable and they won't be able to smash it. So the reason we put 1B after our parameter is this is basically a true or false byte. You can set it to 0 if you want it to be false, and you can set it to 1 if you want it to be true. I mean, this is pretty much how bits work. Um, not that we need to go into that, but just remember you can only put zero or one. It's basically a true or false. So we want it to be invulnerable. So we will put a one B. Now, if we summon our villager, uh, it will summon with the invulnerable tag. So if I just go ahead and, uh, oh, look, you know, someone left this discarded weapon over here. Uh, and we go ahead and summon this villager. Now you can see I am in creative mode, so I will be able to actually hurt the villager, but if I go back into survival mode over here, you see that when I punch it, nothing happens. Even if I take a sword, they are completely invulnerable. So this in and of itself can be used to make anything in the world invulnerable for your players to not destroy, which is incredibly useful. But we will move on to the next tag. You're safe for now. Right, so now that we've set up the invulnerable tag, you don't want to add a new set of brackets to add another tag, because unfortunately that's not how it works in Minecraft. Everything is inclusive in different sets. So these parameters right here, these uh, curly brackets, mean that we are defining a set of tags to give to our villager. So instead, to add a new one, we can put a comma right after that, and we can scroll through the list of tags that we have, and the next one that we want to add, as you saw on our lovely um, farming friend over there, uh, we can give them names. So this is kind of a two-fold thing. First, you're going to want to make sure the tag uh, custom name visible is set to true, which means whatever custom name you give them will actually be visible. Then you want to actually input what their custom name will be. So we'll start with the custom name visible and we will set that to be true by putting 1B. Now note that these are case sensitive. So where I'm putting capital letters, you're also going to want to put capital letters. Of course, again, this is something you can find on the Minecraft commands wiki. Um, so you don't have to just memorize this. Or of course, you can pause the video at any time you may need. Uh, so now this will set their custom name to be visible, whatever we said. If, you'll notice if I summon a villager here, he actually summons with uh, the default name for villager, which I guess is villager, uh, which now shows above their head. Unfortunately, that's not very useful for us, so you can sort of uh, also go to the nearby village. Uh, that's a Ignore that, that's a teleport command. And now we're actually going to want to set what their custom name is. So if we add ourselves another comma here, we will set custom name, and we'll put the little colon. And now for things that we want to add to our uh, mobs, or our villagers in this case, uh, not just setting to be true or false, we need to define another set of parameters. So here, we're also going to want to put another set of brackets. But because this is a text-based parameter, we're also going to want to put the single quotation marks around the brackets. This is kind of just one of those things that you'll have to learn and memorize over time. Um, I would recommend sort of reading through the wiki to determine the syntax for different commands. Not all of them need quotation marks, not all of them need this type of bracket, but it's just the more you do it, the more you'll remember which needs which. So once we've defined that we have a new set of parameters here and they are text parameters by denoting the sort of single quotation marks, we can actually set up what we want to call them. So once we're in text parameters here, uh, we need to define our variables using actual double quotation marks. 
So the first thing that we're going to want to add is the name itself. So this will be the text that we're trying to display. And this will also need a colon after it. All of your variables will also need colons. And then what do we actually want to name him? So this will also be in a set of quotation marks. And for this, we can just name him Samson, uh, Samson, our villager. So this in and of itself would work if we just sort of hit done uh, and summoned him, he would have the name Samson. But I wanted to take the opportunity to show you that you can also color their names, just like we did with the old Mad Titan over there. If I add a comma right after Samson, this is saying that within this text field, we're going to add another part of text. We are going to say in double quotations again, we want to change the color and quotations colon to be uh, in this case, we'll have the double quotations and put aqua. Now there is a set of, I think it's maybe 12 Minecraft colors that you can choose from. It might be a little bit more than that. And then some Minecraft commands do accept hex code. Uh, there is a generator for you to go and play around with that I will actually show you at the end of the video. So stick around. Um, otherwise you can just do general things. I think like red, blue, aqua, dark, aqua, green, dark, green, purple, gray, white, um, sort of generic stuff. Some of them are weird. Like there isn't actually an orange. And I don't, I don't know why Minecraft didn't add in an orange, but there isn't one. So anyway, so we will set its color to aqua, um, and we already set up all of our ending quotation here. So if I hit done and click on the button, you can now see that we have a villager named Samson. He still won't trade anything yet because, of course, that's not set up. But the name color is aqua, and he has his custom name. Uh, and if we wanted to go back in here and change this to another color, say gold, it would be as simple as coming in, editing it, and resummoning. And there we go. Now we have Samson as gold. Uh, unfortunately, these Samsons are needed elsewhere right now, so we will we will send them off on their way. And that is everything about names. So next up, there are two more attributes that are very important for making custom villagers uh, that are generally shop owners that you don't want to sort of move around and be killed by players. The first one, we're going to add a comma, remember. Now we're outside of our text um, adding. So the quotation, single quotation mark ends right here. And we're still defining more parameters. So we're going to put a comma to add another one. And this one is called persistence required like that um, and we will also set that to be true with uh, 1b now what this does this is actually a little bit uh less demonstrable but i will still summon our samson friend here um, i'll change his name back to aqua what this means is usually mobs in unloaded chunks or villagers that haven't been traded with yet can despawn um there are a whole bunch of different you know reasons for why mobs despawn in Minecraft. So if you want to look up individual ones, it could be possible. Obviously, you know that named mobs generally don't despawn. Um, but rather than sort of sifting through all of the flags of what makes a creature persist and what makes a creature despawn, you can just simply add in this persistence required tag, which means now this is a permanent mob on your server. They will stick around. Unless there is some way that they can die, they will not naturally despawn which is what we're going to want if we set up a town very, very far away from players that they'll eventually meet up in. Uh, they're going to want to find this villager there, and it would be a shame if the villager despawned for whatever reason. You just, you trading with the Titan over there? You careful with those stones. You don't, you don't really want to know what they can do. I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure he's fine. Uh, so there's one more flag that we want to uh, raise here when it comes to our perfect ideal trading villager. And that is setting their movement speed to zero. Therefore, they cannot run around. Uh, if you want your villager to run around in a confined area or shop, of course, you don't need to add this flag. But I find it most enjoyable uh, and easy to facilitate map making when you have your villagers sort of stay in predefined locations. So if we go to add another one here by adding a comma, this one is going to start to get a little tricky, and I will explain it as I go along. So the next parameter we're adding actually starts with attributes. And this parameter is used to define all sorts of attributes of your summoned creature, whether it's their health, their movement speed, their armor. These are generally their physical statistics um, that are hidden to the player. So we are going to change uh, their attributes, but specifically we want to change the villager's movement speed. So to define a group of attributes, it's actually starting with the square brackets here. Uh, to sort of denote how many attributes we're going to change. And then to enter them one at a time, we're also going to need another set of curly brackets. What this means is if we had more than one, we'll 
put movement speed in this first set of curly brackets. Then we could comma put another set of curly brackets and change their damage or health in, in this one right here. Uh, but since we just want to change their movement speed, we will put it in this set of curly brackets. Now to do that, we need to get the name of the attribute, which for us is name colon generic dot, oh, not mom, move mint underscore speed comma. Uh, and these names are names you can, again, find on the wiki. Uh, you can have a hard time just guessing them if you're trying to figure them out on your own. So this is the name of the attribute, and we want to set its base to zero. Uh, there are other things you can put here, such as additional or modify. Um, so if you wanted to add movement speed, or if you wanted to sort of modify different uh, how the math is calculated with their movement speed, you could change this base. But we just want to set the villager's base movement speed to zero. So now if we go ahead and close out of this, we will summon our villager Samson. And you'll notice he's not currently running around. Now I can push him, of course. This, this will do this. But even if I punch him, he will not run. He will be able to stay here, and players, of course, can't actually damage them. So the only way that they would be able to sort of move them around is by jumping and running into them. That is, of course, something you can solve with barrier blocks if you want to put invisible barriers around the villagers so they can't really move around a ton. But for now, this is fine. So, now that we've set all of this up, Samson, right here, is our ideal... No, not, not you, Samson. You were, you were kind of the Mark 1 over there. Sorry, buddy. Uh, this Samson right here is our ideal villager for setting up trades. There are other flags, of course, you can use to uh, customize them further if you want to. But for our sake, this is exactly what we want. We want to have a custom name with a custom color. They're going to persist in this world even if no one is in their chunk. They won't be able to be damaged in survival mode or killed by other player-driven means. And they won't be able to move. So... For making a villager, this is great. Even if you just want to populate your cities or map with villagers with custom names that can't move, or even walk around a little bit, you could stop here and just have these untradeable villagers that populate your areas and give your cities a little bit more life. But for our purposes, we are going to actually start giving them some custom trades. So how does trading work in Minecraft? Well, usually you can go up to a villager, right click on them, and they will be offering goods for return of emeralds, or vice versa. You can sell them goods and they will sell you emeralds back. This is of course fine, but if you want to make a custom adventure map, you're going to want your villagers to sell custom items and not just a bucket of pufferfish every once in a while. So we're going to set up a way to set all of a villager's custom trades with everything. Custom items, custom weapons, uh, whatever we want. We will start simple though and just see how we can make our own trades and then we can get fancy from there. So we will start with a simple trade of buying some horse armor for an emerald. So if we just pop back into the command block here, you can see this is the same one as before. It just has everything written out. And this one actually ends with the movement speed. So if we go in here and go to add another parameter, this is a parameter that is actually specific to villagers. Other mobs and entities can't get this, at least not yet. This one is going to be called villager data. And this one, we don't set true or false. Again, we sort of define what that villager data is. Now, because this isn't a text entry, we can just have an open bracket and a close bracket. So there are a lot of different things that can go into the villager data section. This is basically all of the attributes that deal with what makes a villager unique. Their profession, what biome they're in, how many trades they've received, how much XP they give players. What we want, in to make a villager actually tradable when you summon them, there's a couple of things you have to define. First up is their trading level. If I go ahead and put in the level tag right here, we are going to want to set what level the villager is. Now what this means is basically the type of tool that they wear on their chest, whether it's iron, gold, or diamond, or whatever. Usually this dictates how many trades they have, you know, if they're a master or not, their title. 
but we really just need to set it as more of an aesthetic thing because we can dictate what trades they have and you know what they're called so here i've been just sort of putting level five because it gives everyone the diamond tool around their belt um, and i think that looks pretty cool but if you want to change it aesthetically to be you know a wooden one or a stone one you can also change the level to be whatever you want so we'll set this villager's level to five and then we will go ahead and add the next bit of villager data which is setting their profession. So if we type in their profession right there, we want to define what it is. And now this is a text field. So we want to put two of the double quotes and there is a whole list of them, but we can choose Minecraft colon, we'll do butcher. Now this makes the villager default as a butcher. Now, if you don't set up any custom trades, it will summon the villager wearing the butcher's apron at a level five, because we've defined that, and they will be able to sell whatever is in a butcher's trade table in Minecraft. There are loads of different options. I think it's maybe 13 or 14 different choices for villagers now. And because of the way it's set up, and this is Minecraft colon butcher, if there are mods that you're playing with that add other types of villager professions, you can specify those here. For example, I think it is the productive bees mod i don't know what the namespace for that is but let's just say it's productive bees you could replace that there and say productive bees colon and then whatever the name of that uh villager is i think it's actually beekeeper so you could change that to be productive bees beekeeper and it would spawn as a beekeeper villager but we're just doing vanilla stuff so we will stick with the butcher finally the last bit of data that they're going to need in here is what type of villager or what biome they're from so this is specified with the type parameter and this is also a text field so we're going to want some double quotation marks and again the namespace is minecraft or whatever uh villager biome mod you want it to be from we will just put it as plains but you can do plains uh swamp taiga jungle and i think there's one more but that's those are pretty much the ones you would need this just sort of changes their overall outfit um i find the jungle ones have that sort of purple look to them um, the, oh, and Savanna, and the Savanna ones have sort of a more beige orange look, uh, but Plains is sort of the default typical, uh, villagers, so we will just go with Plains for now, and that's it. So if we come here now, we've defined all of the villager data that we're going to need to start setting up trades. So if we spawn our boy, there's Samson, and you can see he has this little diamond tool because he's a level five. He's from the Plains biome, which is why you can see his, uh, clothing hasn't changed too much, and he's wearing the butcher's apron and headband that butchers usually get. Now, if we right click on him, you can see, uh, even though he's a master, because we haven't ever traded with him before, uh, he has one butcher trade, which is 10 sweet berries for one emerald. Actually, not a bad trade. That's like, well done, Samson. That, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, uh, they're going to need your butcher services in a nearby village. Um, so we're going to we're going to send you over there. So now that we've set up all of the villager data that we need to make a custom trade, let's start actually writing the trade. If we come back into the command block here and add a new parameter this one is also specific to villagers and it's going to be called offers uh, again this is going to have a rather large field rather than just a true or false so we're going to want to set it up with a couple of curly brackets now i will warn you this one is going to get a little long and can become confusing the more complex you want your trades Again, I will show you a shorter way of doing this whole system at the end of the video, but I think it's important to learn as much syntax as you can going through it your first time so you know how to edit things later in the future if things don't sort of work out. So this offer section basically dictates trades, what the villagers can sell. For some reason, they are denoted by the term recipes. Uh, and now we're going to define which recipes we want and how many. So this is going to be another square brackets. Again, not really a rhyme or reason for this. You're just going to have to learn where the square brackets usually come in. And for our very first trade, uh, here it is right here with curly brackets, just like before, we will say that the villager is going to buy. And then we need another set of curly brackets to determine what they're actually going to buy. And here we start with ID because we're giving it the ID of the item that we want the villager to purchase. And for us, that would be in quotations because it's a text field. Minecraft colon emerald. And this means that the villager is going to be looking to buy emeralds. Therefore, the player gives the villager emeralds. And now to determine how many, you can actually add a comma right here because it's in the same field and put count with a capital C, colon, 
And let's do four emeralds, so four B. The B is just to determine the numerical values like we said earlier with the bytes. So four in this case is not going to mean true or false. It's going to mean four emeralds. Just a quick reminder that everything so far should always be case sensitive. So if you're testing this out and your stuff isn't working, it might be because you accidentally capitalized a letter somewhere or forgot to. It's unfortunately how syntax is just written, and it's a real pain to figure out uh, where you have to go back and change things. So now that we've finished with the villager purchasing emeralds from the player, uh, what are they actually going to sell? Well, we can go in here and add a comma because we are still in the recipe section here. We've determined what they've wanted to buy. And now that we're in the buy field, we finished that with the ID. So we're now going to change it to the sell field, which again is going to need another set of curly brackets. And just like before, we're going to need the ID of the item they're selling, which is a text field. And it's going to be Minecraft colon diamond horse armor. And again, we can set the count here, but you don't have to, to just be one. It's nice to put this count field here anyway. If you don't, it will default to one. But if you do want to put it here, even just as a placeholder, if you ever want to change the trade to be more, you don't have to come in and add this count field. You can just come in and change the number one to be, you know, whatever you want it to be. So that should be it. Now we've finished up the buy and sell field, which are in the larger recipes field. This is their sort of first recipe or trade. Again, I don't know why it's, why it's called recipes. And then that is in the larger field of offers. And that's it. So now that we have everything all squared away and it's green, meaning we haven't closed, we haven't left any of our brackets open or anything. If I go ahead and summon our villager here, hey Samson, how's it going? You can now see that he is looking for four emeralds in response to diamond horse armor. And just to show you that this does actually work, we will take four emeralds and oh look, you can see he's holding it in front of him. We will pop the four emeralds in here and we will take horse armor. The player gets a little bit of XP, and he gets his little green sparklies, which doesn't actually matter because he's already a master, so he can't be leveled up any further. And that is pretty much the basic of custom trades. Oh, unfortunately, that's just gonna about do it for this video. I realize as we're getting into the custom trades, it is getting a little bit long, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to split it up into a two-parter. But make sure you check back soon where we'll go into more in-depth on custom trades, custom items, and showing you guys a cool shortcut so you don't have to type in these parameters every single time. But even with just this video, you should now be able to spawn ideal villagers, give them parameters to stay still, you know, uh, changing all their different attributes like their movement speed and stuff like that, and the ability to at least add simple custom trades for things like emeralds. Even with that, you should be able to experiment around, but the next video should be out shortly on the more advanced features. So until then, guys, make sure you like the video. If this helped you out, subscribe so you can see the next one in your inbox. And until next time, see ya!